I guess to start off with, I suppose it would be nice to expand that thought on the the meta announcement and then John Carmack's um, response to it, which was that, you know, we're so far away from this. Yes. Um, what did you think about that? You know, it's, it's an exciting time, I think, for the industry. I think COVID has advanced the talk around the metaverse. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, you have a lot of... Um, as you want to call them technical OGs like Tony Parisi and you got Tim Sweeney and you have mm -hmm. some really big names that have been talking about the metaverse and, and what it implies and, and what it's going to look like for, for decades. And, and I think the idea of being stuck at home at COVID has really pushed the envelope as far as how are we going to get into this digital world to be um, engaging both socially, economically, and, and just really dive down into a deeper enriched experience than the current internet. And so it was, it's, it's, it was a definitely a neat thing that I think Mark Zuckerberg did um, with Facebook or formerly known as Facebook at Meta. And they're really just changing the trajectory of where they're going as a company. And I found it really interesting that the CTO, John Carmack, right after his talk said, well, well let's hold our horses. We can barely put 16 people in a virtual meeting, let alone put millions of people in a virtual world. So obviously there is definitely a lot of time ahead of us to figure out how to get there, right? And, um, and for me, I think that's a really important thing because we have to start rethinking what technology looks like and figure out how are we going to put millions of people in a single virtual world to interact and have that true interoperability that everyone's discussing. Yeah, yeah. And that's, I suppose, the central kind of remit of RP1, um, dealing with how to create that world. And it's easy to get involved with the philosophical and the imaginative, but how do you actually do that is another question. Um, and so, you know, what is the problem of scalability and what is the current state of the art? How is it, you know, how close? Yeah, I, I don't think people were thinking about this type of scale for a long time. It's just starting because most video games, yeah. you know, if you come from the gaming space, which I think would mirror, you know, application that would reside in the metaverse. Um, when you talk about a real-time application, um, there are a lot of limitations that have just been accepted by the industry. Um, you typically can put about 100 people on a single server. And um, I think there's only a couple of companies that have gotten up into the thousands in a single shard, shardless world, if you will. And, mm -hmm. and so I, I'm not, you know, I think people are trying to tackle this, um, but are trying to use current technologies in their current form and get more out of it. Um, either that or they're waiting for Moore's Law on hardware. Right, just that hardware at some point will be bigger, faster, and stronger, be able to handle more users, and at that point we might be able yeah. to realize a potential metaverse. And uh, at RP1, we're actually going um, completely from scratch. What if you could start over completely and really think about how mm -hmm. to design network server architecture? And so let's not worry about the graphics. Let's not worry about the avatars. Let's not worry about all the different things that will sit on top. But how do you actually solve the communication layer on linking a massive amount of people in a shardless world? And I think when you start there, you can actually start looking at the inefficiencies on how software is developed. And once you see those inefficiencies, if, what if you could solve a massive amount of those and all of a sudden you get full linear scalability? at the CPU level. Mm. And so imagine now going from a hundred users to 64,000 users on a single server, which now makes it far easier to actually make shardless worlds of every single person on this planet. And so imagine a hundred million people on just 5,000 servers going in these virtual worlds and experiences. Um, it's solving two things. One, it's solving the problem at hand on how do we get there, but it's also solving a problem on, um, uh, on the planet. Right. If you really think about it, you know, real time applications are the biggest consumers of servers. And so people are not talking about the idea that it's going to take millions of servers to host all of these real time applications of the future. And without technology like RP1, I don't think it's going to be possible from a hardware standpoint, um, especially with all the chip issues and all the things that are going on. I think it's going to be very challenging or it's going to be up to one company that can afford the change on all of those things. And so um, for me, it's, I think it, it, it's both mm. exciting, but it's, uh, we definitely have uh, you know, a journey ahead of us. Quite a challenge indeed. It is very exciting what you're saying. And in terms of that, you think it's the best strategy to go back to the foundational level rather than wait for the Moore's Law to kick in where you kind of get you know, layering on top. And yeah. would you say, that, so that's ORP1's strategy then in solving scalability. And how far do you think you are into that process? Yeah, so we're, we have actually, we have a demo of a, a turn-based game where we're able to put over 100,000 yeah. concurrent users on less than one server. 
And uh, compared to industry standards, roughly, roughly about a thousand servers to accomplish the same thing. Um, right now, we're converting that technology to a platform and doing it in a virtual world. And so we're about two to four months away from actually doing a demo where we're going to put two million people in a 50 square mile um, environment, completely shardless and persistent. And um, everyone's going to be able to log in and, and, and literally go in real time through a browser with no downloads. And so imagine literally you put a, 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 an address in and you right away are immersed in a world and you're going to be amongst a massive amount of people. Um, now, a lot of people are going to say, well, what about a million people on one screen? And, I, and it's not the idea of getting a mil million people on one screen um, because if you look at, you know, you know, just in our physical world, I mean, I wouldn't be able to physically be able to see a million people. Um, you have to start yeah, developing basically the, the, the dynamic maps, the proximity based, um, all of these layers that are necessary and how to translate mm -hmm. this information and communicate it from a client to a server in a way that allows a massive amount of people. Um, and so it's, it's definitely exciting. Um, and we're, you know, we're, mm -hmm. we're plugging away um, with a very small team, but uh, I think we're solving a major problem um, that's going to help realize the, the foundation of the metaverse. Absolutely. And that's it really, because it has to be the foundation of, as it says on the RP1 website, you know, a true metaverse to come about, that would have to be the base layer to be able to have these, you know, billions of people at some point in a singular yep. world, um, which is an incredible challenge. And could you tell me a little bit about what your talk is about at the upcoming conference, Enter the Metaverse um, on the 2nd of December? Yeah, I think a lot of people, when they talk about the metaverse, and again, it's the philosophical mm. versus the technical you know, discussion, right? And, and I think we have yep. to start rethinking, you know, what is this metaverse platform going to look like? What is the future internet? Because the current standard of the internet doesn't allow a lot of things that real-time applications need. And so I think as you start rethinking the ideas around this, um, I, I like to use the term shardless users with shardless applications. And, and I think that's really what the talk is going to be about, is the idea of why do we need a, a shardless world with shardless applications, and, and what are the implications of that, and how do we get there? How do we actually get millions of people in a single world? And, and I think it'll be an exciting discussion because I think, again, a lot of things are more philosophical around the metaverse, and I think it would be neat to start talking about the yeah. technologies necessary. And, and to us, it's really um, offering an olive branch. Um, for us, you know, it's really to share kind of our discovery and the things that we can bring um, to the table. Um, but I think it's gonna take a village to build this metaverse. And it's not gonna be just RP1. Yep. And for us, it's really more to share what we've learned and, and how we're kind of tackling the problem and then look to work with other companies to help actually build a, a metaverse for everyone on this planet. That's really exciting. And um, what would it be that you'd like people to, what message would you like them to take away from the talk? Yeah, I, I want them to know that it's possible. And, um, and it's, you know, w w while, while a lot of people, I think, you know, Tim Sweeney and a lot of amazing visionaries have depicted a, you know, we're decades away from solving both the convoluted code and architecture and the inability to scale and the cost associated with scaling. I want, want everyone to know it is possible. And, and we're, we're solving, I think, a major problem that, that goes to that. Um, and so for me, I think it's more about sharing with the community um, because that's really what it is. I think the, the gaming and, and really this metaverse community, um, there is so much passion behind what that looks like. And for me, it's exciting to be a part of that community and really just share kind of what we're working on and look to kind of make partnerships to, to make it happen together. Yeah. Thank you very much, John. It's very exciting for me as a person in that community, I suppose, to see you know, the enthusiasm about it, but also the practical dealing with the problems, because that's something, something that falls behind sometimes that, you know, the ideas are great, but how do you actually do it? And so yeah. I think it's amazing that RP1 are, you know, really going so far with that. It's really cool. Thank you for the kind words. And uh, it is definitely exciting. And we appreciate obviously what you guys are doing. You're helping actually, you know, bring this dialogue and this conversation to a, a good group. And for us, I think that's super important. So I appreciate what you guys are doing over at Tech Circus.